The former Trump senior economic advisor Steve Moore joins us now on how the middle class is doing in the middle of this debate. Hello, good to see you in person. Good to see you too. I normally see you down Happy there at New the Year. White House sometimes, but yeah. face to face here, I'll take it. Um, when you hear those comments, you think what? Well, I, it's a tough sell for the Democrats right now, frankly. I mean, they're running against a president in a booming economy, as you just said, record stock market. But look, it's not just record stock market. And it's not just the fact that we have 7 million uh, unfilled jobs, which is the reason the wage is rising. The story of this economy really is how well it is doing for the middle class. Uh, I had a piece in the Wall Street Journal about six weeks ago showing that, uh, according to Census Bureau data, the average middle class family has $5,000 more income than they did just uh, uh, you know, before Trump was elected. That's a big increase. And then, you know, the, what's been reported just in the last week or two has been that the wage gains for the people at the near the bottom and the middle class have actually been saying, yeah, faster than the top. So what that's telling us, by the way, is income inequality is actually declining right now. So, you know, the Democrats are kind of grasping at straws here. Um, when you look at the polls, though, the numbers aren't as strong as you would think mm -hmm. when it comes to how the president's handling the economy, though. Why? Well, it depends on what poll you look at. Um, you know, the, the CNN poll, and by the way, as you know, CNN is hardly friendly to Donald Trump. Their poll shows 76 percent, three out of four Americans rate the economy as pretty good or great. That's a very, very yeah, strong but when number. Yeah, but also when you look at other polls as well, how he's doing on the economy, it's not necessarily a 70 yeah, I mean, 76 percent approval And I think rate. part of that is because there are a lot of people who don't like Donald Trump. Right. So, you know, p people are going to say, oh, things aren't going well, even though uh, they are. But ultimately, People do vote their pocketbook. They do. Let me give you one example. Look at the Christmas uh, season shopping. Uh, anybody who went to the malls or you know to stores, you, you saw just floods of people. We we've got the statistics. And people, you know, you saw big increases. People are spending more because they have more. Why do you think consumer confidence the reading came down today then? I didn't. I yeah, didn't see that number. Sli slightly, slightly down. Yeah. You know, but well, the fact is, consumer confidence has been high now for three years. So you know, a slight dip does does not concern me. I think people feel good about the direction of the country. I think people feel good about their current financial situation, and uh, you know, we will we will see whether that can sustain itself in 2020. But I think it can. I mean, look. What the trouble signs that I was worried about, like this trade situation with China, the fact that we now have this truce and this trade deal, that takes a big cloud off the horizon for 2020. Um, I'll get to that in a second, but yeah. I want to get to the, the Fox Business, the article that you wrote that's now up on foxbusiness.com. Yeah. Here's what you write at one point. You say, quote, we have become so rich as a nation that even most poor families can buy dolls and baseball bats and $100 Nike basketball shoes for their kids, as well as cell phones that have more computing power than every computer used to put a man on the moon. It is nonsense, you say, to say the poor and the middle class are worse off than they were 20 or 30 or 50 years ago. You say we have become so rich as a nation, but what would you say to the families out there who can't necessarily afford those $100 basketball shoes for their kids or for three or for four or for five kids? And they say, you know what? They see the stories about Mark Zuckerberg making $27 billion and Bill Gates making $23 billion, and they say, but, but what about me? There's always going to be people who get left behind in the economy. But what I'm looking at is what's happening with the average families, and they're doing a lot better. And, and you know, they're doing better in no small part because when you t create a very tight labor market, it allows workers to have more options in terms of where they're going to work, and they can bid up their wages. And that was b b precisely why we did the tax cut. And one of the things that always annoys me is when, uh, if you, you know, read the New York Times, they say, oh, this big tax cut for rich corporations and rich people. No, this is always designed to help Help American businesses succeed. One other statistic that did sure. you see this week, uh, one of my favorite ones, one trillion dollars of repatriated capital. I mean, you guys reported that here on Fox Business News. That's a giant number. One trillion dollars that's coming from France and Germany and China and Mexico back one to the United States. One trillion in debt. Pardon? What about one trillion in debt? Well, look, debt is a problem, but what, look what's happened to our assets relative to our debt. The assets are rising faster than our debt. And if your income is rising faster than your debt, you don't have a problem. It's when your incomes are, fa are falling and your debt is going up, that's when you have. And, and don't forget, we have record low interest rates right now. Right. So that means the servicing costs on the debt are much lower.